but there are many of us who just want to play old school WoW. If you want to play old school WoW, just go on ERA and play. Just do it, stop whining about it. Classic oh, World of Warcraft has a serious problem. It's getting worse, and there is no reason to think that things will improve, because this problem stems from the very people responsible for the game, Blizzard Entertainment. Classic World of Warcraft is suffering because Blizzard's monetization philosophy. This affects Season of Discovery Hardcore and perhaps one day Classic Plus. Guys, stop talking, stop fantasizing about the Classic Plus for fuck's sake. The short answer is monetization and how it drives Blizzard's game development philosophy. But to explain why this is such an issue, we need to dig a little deeper, and that means taking a trip back in time all the way to 2004 and the launch of World of Warcraft, and a very different era of gaming. Okay, right now he just uh, plays the World of Warcraft uh, first trailer, just to kill some time, but don't worry about it boys and girls, I'm just gonna talk over it so that you just don't die of boredom while you're watching this trailer for 1000 times. Back in the times. early 2000s when WoW was being developed, online gaming was very much in its infancy. Yes, MMOs like EverQuest, Asheron's Call and Ultima Online had existed for years by this point, and other genres had captured their own gaming audience too, with titles such as Unreal Tournament, Starcraft and Counter-Strike. Still. This was a far cry from today's era, where online gaming is arguably the default way of playing for many. WoW came out years before the rise of Call of Duty and League of Legends, not to mention the popular games of the last decade like Fortnite, and hell, even Minecraft is young compared to WoW. I love how he's just not going straight to the point, and I, I just love yappers like that. Like. I wish one day I could yap like these guys that we are watching almost every day. Like they they have, they have some ability that I I can never have. Like yap for twenty minutes straight and not get straight to the point. It's just impossible for me. Explain why early WoW was monetized so differently to the online games of today, including modern retail World of Warcraft. Okay, there is a subscription, and you think this is a problem? Good, I think this is a problem as well. Do you have a solution? Probably he has a solution. Probably he's gonna say mac microtransactions. No one likes microtransactions whenever Blizzard is trying to include them into the game. So what's your other suggestion? At launch, World of Warcraft made its money in two ways. Firstly, you had to actually buy the game, and as far as I'm aware, you did have to physically buy the game. As in, go to your local game shop, find a yeah. lovely boxed Love copy, that. pay for it, and come home. Love now, that. I did say... I have all the boxes. I'm pretty sad that, that there are no boxes anymore. Doop, 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 doop. We prepare for some nostalgia with this video, and I'm sure all of us older players have that sweet memory of the day we bought WoW. I was only 13 myself, and I went with my mum to go and get it. Afterwards, we went to a nearby- Ha! <laughs> loser. Absolute loser. I was 13, and I went alone to get it. With my savings. I saved for this, but I didn't go with my mom. Because I don't have a mom. Anymore. Anyway, let's continue. My cafe and I spent about 40 minutes yapping my head off to her about all the cool adventures I was going to go on and how I was going to tame this yeti as my hunter pet. Honestly, being a kid is such a magical experience. How can you imagine just playing a hunter with mana? I just want to talk about this issue. Like, he's looking at the hunter, he sees that the hunter is with mana and he's like, oh my god, I want to play that. This is one of the, hu the, the biggest mistakes in Blizzard from the expansions before cataclysm like hunter with mana is he a caster why why the mana is there holy shit experience and that memory is an absolute treasure to me i know i'm getting older but the days of buying boxed copies of video games from a shop man you didn't always strike gold but when you did awesome feeling so as i've said the first method of monetization was actually buying the game itself the second form of monetization is one we all know well, because it's remained consistent over the last 20 years of WoW, the subscription. Every month, WoW players fork out money to play the game. 
It says a lot about how different the world was in the early years of Warcraft that many of us had to practically take debating classes in order to... I don't know what he's gonna say, but I just want to point out that the subscription fee you paid back in the day is the same you're paying now, which is also saying a lot because there is a lot of inflation out there. And luckily for us, Blizzard are still not increasing the fee, which is, you know... I don't know. I don't know how I'm feeling about that, but I think it's it must be a benefit, you know? To convince our parents that paying a monthly online fee for their child to play a video game... Well I, I just want to say, I never convinced... My, my parents never and grandparents never knew that I played this game. I was saving money, like a champ. I did not eat to play this game. And that's why I'm arguing to defend the wild talking. Because everyone online is saying how wild talking is this and that, but I'm gonna tell you one thing. If I was a child and there was a wild talking option, I would be able to eat properly at school. And I, as a responsible adult right now, I want to give a chance for the young kids to try a great game without having to sacrifice their lunch. So all of you, who don't like the wild talking and you are so obsessed with the fact that this is gonna ruin your business in the auction house in wild whatsoever i want people to actually enjoy the game i don't care about the goat uh, in the game because you know wasn't a recipe for disaster in my case i was only allowed to play wow if i bought game time cards from the shop and i did this for years before i switched to paying online but once you'd figured this stuff out, you had your game. And Blizzard had about as much money as they could reliably squeeze out of you, short of releasing the next boxed expansion. A one-time fee for the boxed copy, and a monthly subscription. That was it. And you know what? It worked really well. Or so we thought. You see, whilst WoW was soaring in the West, growing an audience of millions and playing a pivotal role in the development of online gaming culture, really other interested. important innovations were taking place in the East, particularly around monetization. Now the concept of microtransactions in video games is so widespread now that it feels pointless even explaining it, but back in the days of vanilla WoW, it was essentially unheard of in the West. Some say that MapleStory was the first Eastern MMO to incorporate microtransactions into its monetization. But whatever the case may be, over time, the notion that there were more ways to make money from an online game than the initial purchase price and or subscription fee started to filter its way westward. And it's hardly surprising that these ideas took root as more and more online games followed in WoW's footsteps, carving out their own loyal audiences online as the companies behind them grew and grew. World of Warcraft's history of microtransactions really begins in the Wrath of the Lich King expansion, which is ironic considering that there were more concurrent players then than at any point before or since, meaning more box copies of the base game plus its two first expansions being purchased and more monthly subscribers paying to play the game. I say this because it's important to remember that as much as one might argue that increased monetization of a game is necessary if the team is expanding and producing more content, Wrath, TBC, not to mention the massive vanilla WoW itself, I mean, are we really going to suggest that they had less investment and therefore less content than, say, Warlords of Draenor? Please. At first, the microtransactions in WoW were very micro indeed. Paid game services like name and server changes had been around for some time, but it was the inclusion of the Celestial Steed mount added to the new cash shop. Wait a second, this mount is actually paid? I always thought it's some sort of real grind fest and... I always had a lot of respect for the people who had it. Okay, it's nothing special then. In April 2010, that really marked the beginning of a new era. But honestly, none of us really cared that much at the time. It's important to remember that the culture of players was somewhat different back then. Experienced players weren't interested in flying around on a store-bought mount. They wanted Invincible or the Time Lost Proto Drake, something which would show off their skill and dedication to the game. So if you were seen on a store mount back then, all that it indicated to many of us was that you were either new or bad at the game, not that you had something cool. 
Blizzard even acknowledged this themselves by adding an NPC to the Cataclysm expansion later that year called Johnny Awesome, a Blood Elf in Hillsbrad Foothills who would proclaim his skill and experience all the while riding a celestial steed named Twinkles and annoying everyone around him. It's ironic that Blizzard would mock a type of player that they were actually beginning to tailor the game for. But really, this just goes to show how easy it was for the company to introduce these cosmetic microtransactions. It was a joke, one they themselves were able to acknowledge, and as usual, something which would go on to define the game was allowed to quietly slip in without any real resistance. We've seen this with so many features in WoW, but I doubt when we look back in the years to come, anything will have had as much of an impact as microtransactions. And now I'm honestly wondering, how many Celestial Steeds did Blizzard manage to sell because dumb teenagers thought Johnny Awesome was actually funny? You know what? I don't want to know. More cosmetic items, more mounts, and more services too. Since 2010, microtransactions in WoW have gradually increased with each expansion, allowing players to bypass what was at the time a long and somewhat tedious leveling process. Mists of Pandaria was the first expansion to introduce the level boost, all at the low, low price of several months worth of subscription money. And it was during the truly exceptional Warlords of Draenor expansion that Blizzard added the WoW token to the game, arguably making it pay to win in the process. Pay to win? WoW token is pay to win? <sighs> I'm gonna let this guy say first. If you aren't familiar, the token can be purchased for real money on the cash shop and then sold in-game for gold, which can in turn be used to pay for boosts from other players through challenging end-game content. I know this sounds hard to grasp, deliberate- Anyway. Deliberately so, in my opinion, but what this means is that through a multi-step process, a player could effectively pay real money to gain access to the best gear, titles and achievements in the game, bypassing the challenge of working their way up and, when you think about it, the very reason for playing the game in the first place. Okay, first of all, is this game a competition? Does it really matter if player X has better gear than you? No. Maybe matters if you face each other into an arena, but uh, besides that, why do you even care? This person have paid real money for pixels, which you can get without using this money. Does this make him a better player? No. I am the living embodiment of that whenever it doesn't matter if you have a good gear or all the legendaries or stuff like that it doesn't matter other better players are gonna kill you in this game because in legion i was i want to say with biz gear on every character i had and everyone was beating me up no matter how they were geared so why do you even care? Isn't it more, isn't it better to have the system that enables players, instead of paying real money, to be able to actually play the game for free by working their way in with in-game gold? Because I feel like this is way better than paying real life money, especially for all the kids. And now you're going to say, I don't want kids to join the game. Otherwise, it will die. Otherwise, you're going to continue playing with your grandpa friends until the rest of your days, and you're not going to see any new player whatsoever, ever. I'm going to continue listening his little rant about while talking, but I think this is one of the greatest things that happened into the game. It just opened the door for so many new players, because I don't know how are you guys, but it's really hard to even pitch the idea to my friends to tr give a shot to World of Warcraft whenever, whenever they hear, I need to 
buy the game and I need to buy a subscription. Are you insane? And I'm like, I'm not insane, but Blizzard are kind of insane, you know? And whenever they get got the WoW token, it, it was better. I could have buy WoW token and give it to a friend, right? I don't know if I can actually give it to a friend, but in theory, I can do that if I was grinding gold. And this is great because I can work my way for to make a friend of mine give a chance to the game because in many countries, you know, $12 or nothing, but I mean, for $12, you can have two meals in Bulgaria, which is kind of a big deal. Even today, you can have kind of two meals outside. You can eat a whole day with $12. And what is better, to eat a whole day or play a game for a month? Be happy for a bunch of pixels, you know? It used to be that people paid to play WoW. It was a great game, and those of us lucky enough to discover it early... Were and don't, don't get it mistaken. You think that... <laughs> while talking unleash this kind of service and uh because of that the game became pay to play i'm gonna tell you firsthand i was i have found numerous times players that were actually giving gold to other people for real money and these things were not legit people were buying games within game gold People were buying boosts within game gold without even the WoW token existing. But it's just more illegal. And you are and you can get banned for that. I don't when know. we were still kids loved it. Now people pay not to have to play WoW. To skip any and all content deemed too difficult, too time consuming, or worst of all, too reliant on actually working with other players in a massively multiplayer online game. They pay to not play. Madness, I tell you. And finally... Madness. Oh, such a madness. You're working 9 to 5 jobs and you have 2 hours per day to play this game and you cannot farm this fucking thing every fucking game because you actually have kids when you go back home. Madness that you give go money to actually finally see the mount in your hands and be able to enjoy it. Madness. Blah. Finally arriving at the current age of retail WoW, microtransactions have become accepted, however unwillingly, as just a part of the game and the direction it's taken. Some players are happy with it, and others have realised with grim acceptance that the cash shop simply isn't going away. I would argue personally that the big reason why Blizzard has pushed Retail WoW towards a more cosmetic, collectible focused game is because it encourages microtransaction purchases. If players are mostly interested in what new Genius. cosmetics they can get on their character, if that is the mark of an accomplished player rather than their raiding and PvP achievements, or simply their social experience in the game, then why not pay real money for the new cool looking stuff, especially if this is becoming increasingly normalised as just what WoW players do. But hey, that's just one of my retail WoW conspiracy theories. But this what a conspiracy theory, man. What a <laughs> he is the biggest conspiracy theorist out here. This video isn't about retail, and I can already hear you asking. I, I'm, I'm telling you guys, I don't want to hate anyone. It's just whenever I watch one of these videos, it always happens that people that are making these videos are so unprepared most of the time. It's just ridiculous. And they're, they're defending one part of the community without actually trying to see uh, the coin from all the sides and trying to make kind of everyone happy. Either we're gonna uh, see the uh, PV Andy trying to defend only PvP players or we're gonna see PvP Andy or we're gonna see the no life for Andy that he doesn't understand why players who cannot invest a lot of time are playing the game. Like, just, there is a reason why I'm not making these videos because I'm trying to look the coin from all the sides and Honestly, throughout the years, I have seen that maybe a lot of you are going to hate me for this, but I have seen that Blizzard are trying 
to to make some sort of a balance and I'm okay with it you know some people will say that I'm sucking cocks because I'm saying that but you know they're trying they they obviously cannot remove their subscription their their income is is dependent on that uh if they remove their subscriptions they probably should get some layoffs uh they're trying to push the microtransactions and you know they're trying it but at the same time they're getting hate for it i mean if they're not getting hate for it and if this works i see how one day the subscription will be gone but you know it's <sighs> i'm gonna continue King Volgren, what does this have to do with classic why is the monetization history of wow and the current practices in retail important to classic wow and why is this such a problem well now that we've covered the history of the game from 2004 all the way to 2024 now that you know how we got to this point i can explain it very clearly i don't think classic wow makes enough money for blizzard i don't think it makes enough money for them to invest the necessary resources which are required for classic to be at its best you know what i'll go even further I don't think Classic can make enough money for Blizzard to give it the resources it deserves. Not currently, anyway. And for pre What resources does Classic needs, man? It just... Realms needs to be open. Realms are open. Realms are dead. Blizzard are already giving these resources. Proof of this, just look at Blizzard's own claims from back in 2019 when Classic WoW first launched. Remember all your old friends who were coming back to play the game? Remember all the streamers and games journalists that were raving about how good the experience was going to be? It was a gaming phenomenon back in August 2019. And you know what? That was proven to be the case in the revenue figures. Subscriber revenue grew by 223% in August compared to the previous month. And that is a massive achievement which is reflected in how popular Classic WoW was. It was great. But you know what's even crazier than that figure? The fact that it actually made less money than the previous year's August when Battle for Azeroth came out. Yeah, that same Battle for Azeroth that was considered by so many of us to be absolute trash. It still made more money than Classic WoW did on its launch. And ultimately, this is the best example of what I'm talking about. It is impossible for Classic to make the same amount of money that retail can, regardless of how good a product we get in either. I have said that numerous times, but because Classic is pushed from the boomer Andes like me that are going for one more nostalgia act. I mean, we're not enough. Retail is good enough. Believe it or not, retail is not dead. Not dead at all the version of the game and this is what is already leading to delays and disappointment in our current classic projects right now now let me be honest when i said that classic wow has a serious problem i was talking about old school classic wow i'm talking about season of discovery vanilla era servers and any potential tbc wrath other seasonal or perhaps even classic plus servers we may get in the future because classic cataclysm is largely invulnerable to this problem it has a cash shop, it has microtransactions, and as Classic continues to move through the expansions which appears to be Blizzard's intention with this project, these microtransactions will just develop further and the shop will expand just like it did back in retail, because Classic will become retail over time. Yes, it'll always lag behind where the current retail expansion is, but the ethos the design philosophy, and most importantly, the monetization philosophy will grow increasingly similar to that of what we have today with Retail WoW. I genuinely believe that as Classic goes through the expansions, from Cataclysm to Mop to, God forbid, Warlords of Draenor, we're heading for a somewhat dystopian future in which both Retail and Classic players are buying stuff from the shop, maybe even boosts in increasingly similar versions of the game, which I'm sure if you're a shareholder with the company is just delightful. As a player, it sounds like a nightmare to me. 
How long, I wonder, before the classic tagline is dropped in favour of something more fitting for such a retail-like game, such as Remix or Remastered, perhaps? But what about the other classic, the old-school versions of WoW? What about the Season of Discovery players, or those who are currently crying out for fresh vanilla, TBC and Wrath servers, for a new progression through the original game? What about those who are actually setting up their own progression projects on Deviant Delight right now because Blizzard won't do it? Many will. That is so sad. Uh, they want more. They want more. Do I want to continue with this video? Let's see will tell you that Classic WoW as a concept was always rooted in the desire to go back, to return to old, pre-Cataclysm Azeroth. Yes, people were split on whether they just wanted vanilla or progression through to the end of Wrath, but there was always an understanding that the term Classic, in reference to World of Warcraft, has always referred to the original trilogy of Vanilla WoW, The Burning Crusade, and Wrath of the Lich King. What are the prospects then for these versions of the game? And, dare I say it, what about Classic Plus? And let me just say, I do wish all of those players who want to- Did I remember when there was rumors for Classic Plus? I just read them and there was- there were like a lot of YouTubers that were like, Oh my god, these are leaks for Classic Plus, oh my god, oh, oh, oh. I mean- it would be amazing, but who's gonna write the story for Classic Plus? I mean, obviously it's taking them two years to think about the new expansion, which is basically, I feel like, their heaviest investment, because it's something completely new. And you want to say that they're gonna do an entire new team that's gonna do cinematics, storylines, quests, all that kind of stuff in order to do classic plus when they're even doing layoffs insane play Cada classic mop classic legion classic all the best i don't want anyone to have a bad time in their game of choice more power to you but for those of us who are primarily concerned with the older versions of wow i just mentioned the future looks very uncertain. Because those versions of Classic WoW simply can't make money for Blizzard like retail or even Classic Cataclysm can. It's crazy to think it, but Season of Discovery is actually less monetizable than Vanilla WoW was back in 2004, because you don't need to buy a copy of the game to play it, just have the monthly sub, which is of course shared across all versions of WoW, making it incredibly difficult for Blizzard to be able to clearly point to a certain slice of the player base and say, ah, those are the guys who are here purely for Season of Discovery. And don't get me wrong, this is not me advocating that Blizzard find a way to squeeze more money out of the players and incentivize work on SOD. Far from it. The reality is that despite the fun I've had in it, see- Dude, I'm watching this runes menu and I, the only thing I want to do is cry. Like, fuck's sake. Such a pure, such a dumb execution. It makes me mad. Season of Discovery doesn't add a whole lot new to the game, just some revamped instances, a few events and rune abilities, which, let's face it, are almost all abilities which already exist at some point in WoW's life and have been retroactively added to Classic. It's a fun game, no doubt, but the amount of new stuff really does not justify paying more as a player than we already are. And fortunately for us players, it's unlikely that Blizzard will ever add the WoW token or a cash shop to SOD because that would completely destroy the vanilla spirit that the game is supposedly based on, doubtless turning a great number of players, myself included, off the experience completely. But this leaves them in a strange position, because no matter how well Season of Discovery performs, no matter how many people are subscribing primarily or exclusively to play it, it's practically impossible for SOD to ever be as profitable as the other game modes. 
All it takes is a returning retail player to purchase, alongside their monthly sub, a few cosmetic items from the store, or a character boost, possibly a server transfer or two. And before you know it, that one retail player has put more money into Blizzard's pocket in a single day than half a dozen Season of Discovery players do in a month. The same applies to Vanilla Era, Hardcore, and should Blizzard ever listen, the fresh TBC and Wrath servers that many players are crying out for right now. And this explains to me why we don't have Phase 4 of SOD yet, why we don't have a new set of fresh classic servers, and why such efforts have been made to sub- I just want to clarify, I'm not the cla like the classic Andes and I don't want Blizzard to give me constantly refresh experience of classic era and start from the beginning and do a new hero and whatever if i want to start fresh i'm gonna start an out all i want is have classic era have tbc realms have rat realms that's all i'm asking for nothing else just rat realm on the latest patch Good enough. Like there are bajillion pirate ser private servers that are doing that. They're just fine. If you want to add a twist, just refresh this shit once, once every two years or so. It's not a big problem. If you want, if you don't want, I'm fine as well. I just want to go to rat the once or twice or three times per year. Have my nostalgia act for some time and move on. Liminally encourage players to focus on CADA or MOP Remix or preparing for the war within, instead of wondering when they'll get an update on their game and why Phase 4 for SOD seems so lacklustre already despite its delay. All of this, all of it, comes down to monetization, to profit margins and Blizzard's sheer disinterest. And the worst part of all of this is that I'm certain these versions of World of Warcraft the era servers, Season of Discovery, Hardcore, are still very profitable. I know many players who return to the game to play SOD and have been subbed for 6 months now for that reason alone. We know millions of players worldwide returned for Classic in 2019 because they wanted to experience the joy of old WoW once more, and that 220% increase in sub revenue, that's gotta count for something, right? It would cost nothing more than maintenance fees for there to be a few new old school WoW servers for Wrath, Era and TBC, and I don't doubt there would be tens of thousands of subbing players as a minimum who would play these versions of the game. We're seeing players organise their own server projects as we speak. Old school WoW is still very profitable, and in 2004, that would have been enough for Blizzard. But now, I'm not so sure. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is just a big conspiracy theory. Phase 4 of SOD will be a massive experience which paves the way for a fully developed, fully resourced Classic Plus. But honestly, I doubt it. And I'm not holding my breath. In fact, sadly, for the first time in well over a year, I'm barely even playing WoW at the moment, because Blizzard, as much as you might wish it, we don't all want to play Kata or Mop Remix, and we're not all desperate to play The War Within when it comes out. I wish those players who do the very best, and I hope their gaming experience is great, but there are many of us who just want to play old school WoW, who campaign for that version of Classic for years. <laughs> if you want to play old school WoW, just go on ERA and play. Just do it, stop whining about it, you know? If so many of you want to play it, go together and do it, it's not that hard really. It's exactly what you did with the fresh servers, it's... God damn. And who don't want to see it die because small teams of hobbyist private server developers put more time, resources and passion into their classic projects than you do, Blizzard. Dude, don't compare the private servers. If you think that Blizzard is pay to win, you should see the, all the private servers, man. In all the private servers you can, you can pay to win, not to get boosted through a dungeon or a raid but to directly buy Shadow Morn or any other legendary. Just this is how they're making their profit. So it's not exactly passion, right? Anyway, sorry if this was a bit of a rant, guys. I've been quite frustrated with the game for some time and the fact that despite wanting to make new content, wanting to play with my friends and you guys, I feel that Classic hasn't delivered the game environment to do that in recent months. 
I'm not prepared to pretend that it's all sunshine and rainbows for some perceived benefits to my YouTube channel. I'll always tell you how it is and keep the passion alive here. Let me know what you think about the state of the game, what you're playing, and what expectations you have for the future of Classic WoW. He asks, what am I doing? I'm playing WoW. I'm playing whatever I want to play. I don't care about it. If I don't like it, I'm not gonna play it. Simple as that. Now back to 